Okay, well, we're back with uh, part two of this uh, interview about what's been going on with this um, survey that the British Medical Association did. This is number three. You represent people here in the Isle of Man. Correct. And you can't touch in the first place. I mean, you going public like this is, is not necessarily um, what Manx Care want you to do. And could you get into trouble even doing these sort of things? I mean, what's, what's the situation? Uh, yes, I need to be very careful with what I say. Yeah. And... Uh, um, my advice from the BMA is, as long as I stick to the facts, I'll be all right. Right. Well, the BMA have done three of these. And I know that next week, Max Care said they're going to have a whole, the whole, everyone in Max Care is going to be on, in a survey. Have they done that before? And if so, what, what's the difference between the responses? Have you had a chance? Um, the uptake had been much, much lesser than um, our survey uptake in the past. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, going back uh, to pre-COVID times, there were surveys with only about 18% um, taking up. Last year, there was 25% who took it up. Um, we repeatedly encouraged all doctors to take uh, a, a full part in it. Yeah. Um, the results um, we felt were not really complete we got some results out, um, but um, not all results were made freely available. Hopefully this year that will be different. And at the end of this interview, we, if you stay with us, we'll put the full uh, response from Manx Care, their, their written press release today up. So it, to balance it up, please do read that. But I mean, in that, they've said they've been OK recruiting. They've had some good new people come in. Everything I've heard has been the opposite because well, not just me, but any sort of press we've been doing on this subject now for years has been pretty negative. And people Google these things, don't they, before taking up a, a position in here. Is, is that part of the problem? You, you finally, well, I say you, but you know, is it hard to get staff to move to the Isle of Man to take up positions? Yes, um, and also particularly after the recent pace settles, settlements in the UK, mm. we are actually falling behind. They're still unresolved here, aren't they? No. Um, What's the outcome? Are you still hanging out for? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm choosing my words carefully. <laughs> okay. It's highly likely that we might be forced to take industrial action. Um, Which will make the waiting list even longer then, right? Yes. Um, that's a last resort. I mean, doctors, that's, that's we, a last We don't want to, um, but it uh, looks like our uh, hands are okay. being forced. Well, I wasn't expecting to go down this route, but yeah. what, where are you up to? You, you have a negotiating body that deals with Manx Care. Yes. And you, um, I know that you, you was it 5% or something? That, that the very first offer we got made came eight months after the day it should have been implemented. Right. Until then, we didn't even get an offer. And it was uh, rather inferior compared to our surrounding jurisdictions. And so we've been negotiating back and forth. And uh, they're basically not budging. And uh, we felt usually in the years that I've been here, the minimum starting point for negotiations would be NHS England offer. Yes. Plus, Some any, years, plus any waiting yeah. amount for the Isle of Man and the extra. Some costs. years we've managed to negotiate slightly more. Right. Other years we haven't. But this time it was. This is it. Take it or leave it. And the UK have settled, haven't they? I can't remember. Yeah, which, yeah they that's. Have, they have. What did they end up with? Right, the junior doctors got twenty-two percent over two 22%. years. The consultants, on average, got ten point five to eleven percent, and the SAS doctors, who are the non-consultant career grade doctors, they got uh, around eleven to twelve percent. And you got what's the last one in the Almanac? Was it was it five percent or something? Yeah, um, but we haven't had a pay raise since April twenty-two. Now, of course, in, in the old days, there would be questions in Tim Ward and the minister could answer it, but this Max Care thing, you have to explain to me, because, it, I mean, even reducing the amount of operations going on, the minister, Hooper, said, it, it's nothing to do with me, it's for Max Care. Is, is this a good or bad thing that you're not dealing with the minister? Or <laughs> uh, I mean, Max Care, obviously, you have to go and get permission anyway, right? So it's just a... Yes, it's quite difficult. It's new. And... Uh, we also feel that there is a big disconnect between Manx Care Board and the Manx people 
and of course Manx Care Board and as staff members. All right. Now, and please be, tell me, Doctor, you can't answer this. I mean, Manx Care have this job to do, and it's three million pounds a year. What it was, it was more, maybe more now. Who knows? But some, they, they, they have to picture that, don't they? I mean, another organisation could come in potentially and take over that thing. Do you have that commitment that Manx Care are the people to deal with, or or not? I think it's a tricky question. At the moment, yes, because the DHSC handed all our contracts to Manx Care. Yeah. So they're the ones we need to deal with. And if at all we do take industrial action, it will have to be against Manx Care, not the government. Right. It just seems like this, this, this was all put in place, Manx Care, to make things better. We were all meant to be looking forward to happier days. Yeah. It doesn't seem to be working and out. That, that really saddens me because... Uh, Invariably, if we do take industrial action, the patients will suffer. That's the last thing we as doctors want to sure. see. Um, uh, I'll, I'll say this. Uh, I know for a fact that the budget for pay, i.e. the wage uh, packet, is actually underspent by 2%. Right. So there is actually is that for of banking scope. people and that sort of thing to go to? No, go it's there? just the just the salaries. Yeah, is under there. Yeah, because that must be quite annoying, isn't it? When when you haven't got enough staff, then they, they throw money at, sometimes anyway to bring in bank. Is that the right terminology? Yeah, yeah. like we spent twenty eight uh, million on uh, how much? Twenty eight million on synaptic. Right, mm. that's 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 pretty. Yeah, okay. What else can we say about um, what's going on then? And, and as I said, I, you can get maybe hauled in disciplinary or something, ghastly, right? Or if you're not careful, because... I, I need to be careful, yes. Which is crazy, because you should be allowed to... Well, you are talking, so thank you. And I'm, I'm because, sure people appreciate that. Um, one of our fundamental roles is to act as a patient advocate. But is the culture and environment safe enough for us to act that way? Mm. I guess time will tell. Okay. If you see me disappear suddenly, you will know. <laughs> People hear horror stories about what goes on sometimes up at the hospital. I mean, is, what is going on in that sense? Have you got enough good guys there working there? Or as we sort of alluded to, because the pay structure is now so variant, we're not even getting a chance to get people in the right level of, of doctors over. Yeah, um, we do still manage to have a cohort of very good, dedicated doctors still on the island yeah and uh, uh, they're sticking on and trying to do the best within the constraints um, but i don't know how long that's going to last unless something changes but it seems like it's all being stuck together with glue, glue tape because like when it, we have tt and those, those sort of things and they suddenly say there's no room in in, in the hospital well, that's a concern that you know the public hear about and, and should we be worried i mean is everything running at almost you know, capacity? The bed base has been reduced steadily. And to be fair to Manx Care, that process actually started pre Manx Care. Mm -hmm. And part of the reasoning was to bring it in line with the UK. And we can't really afford to do that because in the UK, for example, if the children's ward is full, I would say, sorry, children's ward's closed today. Please. The ambulances take all the children who need admission to, to hospital, hospital and are yes. on the highway, motorway. Yeah, she can't, can't do that here. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So for that reason, for isolated places, you really need to plan to run no more than 80% of your full capacity. And where are we with private patients? Because the years ago, they got, they got rid of it. And it was coming back or was meant to be. Is it, is that uh, for people was, who want to pay? You know, It was closed in 2019. Yeah. And a lot of advantages to private healthcare being provided along with public healthcare, like looking at Jersey, for example. Uh, two big advantages. One, private healthcare provides about 6.7 million every year. As an income? As an income to Jersey I mean, Health. That's, two, yeah. it takes a lot of people from the waiting lists away. Yeah. Three, it makes it very attractive for the consultants to come and work there. Because that's where you can make some more money. I mean, everyone appreciates you're going to get the same yeah. people, but you, you, you can do your own timing for an operation. Yeah. And absolutely. here, nothing like that still not happening. No, in 2019, it was closed. 
then bits and pieces have started. And the perception is um, if you are uh, seen in a favorable light by management, you're allowed to do some private practice. Uh, and so otherwise, if your you're face not. fits. That, that's the perception. That may not be the full truth, but. Okay. Before we finish, what's going to happen, do you think? The situation with Manx Care, that, that survey. They, they're promising, and as I said, we'll put up the, their, their response. They're promising that they're saying that there's lots of people who are having a great time. Well, not, not quite like that, but you know what I mean? That they, they can fill the vacancies and that sort of thing. Would you, what would you make that statement that they released today? Um, it, the positive, I'm an internal optimist. The positive aspect seems to be they're still wanting to work with us. Yeah. Um, well, they've got no choice, surely. I mean, you know, they've got to work. That's, you, you, that's you, what it's you about, would think so. Well, they're the management. They're meant to be working yeah. with you. And <laughs> unless something drastic changes, i.e., there is a major reorganization where we have a truly clinically or professionally led organization, we tend to pay lip service to being a professionally led organization. But unless it happens truly, uh, I don't see much changing. And what deeply worries me is, so far, they have not touched direct patient care, but that's starting now, i.e. canceling operations. Uh, understand the current terminologies, elective cool off, that makes it sound like... They've said it's only for so long, though, didn't they? But actually doing it, um, we didn't think that was a red line that would be crossed. And when's that, when that come in already? Um, yeah, uh, I think it started beginning of October. So now people will be getting letters saying, sorry, we're not going to do your operation. Yes. We'll put you on a waiting list yeah. further back. Yeah. I know. I, would, would it be useful to be able to talk to the minister about this? Although he hasn't talked to me for 451 days since he didn't like uh, an interview about that um, group um, who did a, a look in anyway, so To can't. be fair to the minister, he and Paul Richards and the CEO asked to meet with us and we met with him last uh, Friday. Yeah. He seemed very receptive and he said he's looking forward to working with us. Um, but we wait to see if that meeting has led to any real change that uh, impacts patient care yet, but it was only last Friday, so. Ever I'm the optimist. optimist, ever the optimist. And, uh, you know, as I said, uh, it, it's, it, it almost kind of goes round and round because the more the, the dissatisfaction continues, the less the pay is sorted out, there's going to be, it's going to be a decline, surely, yes. in, in, in numbers and a brain drain on doctors from the Isle of Man. Yeah. There's very good published evidence that the worse the culture is, worse patient care gets. Yeah. The other thing that for the which there's very good evidence is doctor led organizations function much better in terms of patient safety and cost effectiveness. Most of that evidence is from US and Australia, but it's their published evidence. Well thank you for joining us and thank food, you. Uh, I mean any time and you know because I think people want to know what's going on. Thank you. And I will have to say if Manx Care wanted to do an interview I would love to hear from them. I mean, we've got the statement, and we'd love to hear from the minister, if he will talk to me. Uh, but um, in, in the meantime, um, if people are thinking they need to go to hospital, they're not going to feel too good about it, right? They're just going to, there's always that worry feel. It, it, it's still safe, only despite all the difficulties. Yeah. Okay, so we will talk again. Thank you.